So there was a debate today in Parliament after a ministerial statement by the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak about the strikes against Israel by Iran in retaliation for the attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus and the discussion about Britain's role in trying to de-escalate the situation also with a lot of kind of hand-waving about how Iran are a destabilizing power in the region which to be fair is at least somewhat true but then again that's also true of Israel at the same time. This is a situation where essentially everybody is kind of in the wrong but at least Iran are retaliating rather than getting, engaging in preemptive strikes which is what Israel has done in this situation. Israel are the one who provoked Iran by striking first by attacking the consulate. Not that many MPs have said so. Not that many people in the Commons have decided to actually hold the government to account for refusing to at least acknowledge the fact that Israel were the people to strike first. Israel the ones who unprovoked attacked the consulate that have allowed this situation to escalate further and that it has, right? Again, I'm not here to try and be an Iran defender. Don't like Iran, don't like the government. They're bad, right? I want to make sure before any liberal idiots in my comments section try and say, oh, I can't, you, you say you love Iran, but you'd never be able to survive an Islamic theocracy. I agree. I wouldn't be able to survive an, an Islamic theocracy. But adherence to international law, having an international rules-based order, maintaining that rules-based order so that everybody is on a level playing field and adhering to the same rules so nobody has a justification to therefore break those rules if they're outside of whoever is in the part of the monopolar world that we live in who is allied to the united states as the global police for example there is no reason for them to break it if everyone adheres to it but we have a two-tier international order where allies of the us can get away with murder and everybody else has to follow the rules that they don't follow themselves and that is a recipe for disaster if that continues so holding israel to account for breaking international law and not adhering to that order is paramount so that we can criticise when other people don't follow it. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Otherwise, the order gets destabilised from the beginning. One MP who stood up in Parliament and pointed out this problem is a somewhat controversial figure. Now, I have not been shy on this channel about criticising George Galloway. I don't like George Galloway very much for his kind of reactionary politics, but in terms of the Israel-Palestine conflict, he is someone who I fully support in terms of viewpoints on this, and his continual criticism of the State of Israel and their actions has been very, very laudable. And in the debate in Parliament, he specifically pointed out the level of hypocrisy and double standards that have been shown. Let's watch. There was not one single word in the Prime Minister's statement of condemnation of the Israeli destruction of the Iranian consulate in Damascus, which is the proximate reason for the event everyone is here in concert condemning. He was not even asked to do so by the front bench opposite. Kay Burley is the only person so far to demand that of a government minister. We have no treaty with Israel, at least not one that Parliament has been shown. And the Iranians are not likely to listen to him when Britain occupied Iran, looted its wealth, and overthrew its one democratic socialist government in my own lifetime. Which is true. He's referring to the coup against Mossadegh, specifically. So again, he's not wrong in the statements that he's making here. And I would have wished that you know, more people would push back specifically and say, well, hang on a minute. Again, if we want to ensure that rules are followed, when some people break them and they don't get punished, yet we condemn people who break the rules who we don't ally with, then we undermine the entirety of those rules to begin with. Because this literally happened with regards to how Israel responded to October the 7th by engaging in their war against Gaza, by essentially being attacked, responding in a more regressive measure, what were the responses? Israel has a right to defend itself, rather than talk about the proportionality of the response. Because you can make loads of salient criticisms of the proportionality of Iran's response. To be fair, they, ter they telegraphed it openly. They telegraphed it openly, gave people advanced warnings. They only attacked military targets in terms of air bases that they targeted. And the only civilian injury was because of a missile fragment of one that was intercepted in midair by Israeli defences. So very little damage has been caused to this. And so Iran calling the matter done with should be a sign that we should be de-escalating now. That's what we should be hearing in the statements being made here. Let's listen to Rishi's response. <laughs> Well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, what, whatever may have happened uh, a few weeks ago, it is absolutely no justification for launching more than 300 drones and missiles from one sovereign state towards Israel. It's as simple as that. And in the Honourable Gentleman's question, not once did he condemn that action or indeed the action.
So it's just tit for tat. Oh, well, you asked me to condemn. Well, you didn't condemn. How about we all condemn these military actions, but of course you won't do that for Israel because they're perceived as being an ally and perceived as being Western. It's all about team sports with these people. And to be fair, George Galloway hasn't been above team sports mentality when it comes to East versus West as, as a campist rather than being an internationalist on these issues. But that doesn't make Rishi Sunak right in his response here. And on top of that, he says, well, no matter what happened before, that doesn't justify this. Where was that standard applied to Israel? At no point said, well, no matter what happened on October the 7th, you can't just blow up all of Gaza. No, they just kept saying Israel has the right to defend itself. It has to be in accordance with international law, whilst refusing to actually condemn any actions that have been outside of international law as well. It's so blatantly hypocritical. One interesting point that was made there by... George Galloway specifically, is that the only people to be held accountable in government has been David Cameron in an interview with Kay Burley, of all people. Like, you must admit that the entirety of our political discourse in this country has reached like a surreal nadir where the only person holding our government's foreign policy at account is the woman who asked Peter Andre about his love life and made him cry on Sky News. Anyway, let's have a little bit of a watch. Is it bad judgment or good judgment to hit uh, Iranian sovereign territory in Damascus. Look, that was a ma that's something the Israelis decided to do. You we haven't made a. I know. Well, I, let me. I'll, I'll answer the question, which is I, I can completely understand the frustration the Israelis feel when they look at uh, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and they look at the terrible things that they have done all over the world, including the support they give to Hamas. And of course, Hamas were responsible for October the seventh, and that is where all of this begins. So you can. And again, people will keep saying, oh, well, Iran are the ones who fund unscrupulous groups in the region, which is true, and they shouldn't, and it should be something that we should strongly condemn. But the US literally funds Israel. The US funds Israel. The US are funding the people committing the genocide that we're seeing on our screens. That would not be a justification for, I don't know, some member of the Palestinian resistance brigades to destroy the American embassy in Israel. That would not be a justification. But under this kind of discussion around the bombing of the embassy in Damascus, under that same premise, he must admit that it would be for the Palestinian resistance brigades to therefore destroy an, an American embassy because they fund the people engaging in the illegal occupation of the Palestinian territories. Completely understand um, the frustration. Yeah, but um, what about Iran's frustration at part of its sovereign territory being flattened? Well, I would argue there is a, a massive degree of difference between what Israel did in Damascus and, as I said, 301 weapons being launched by the state of Iran at the state of Israel for the first... Yeah, there's a big difference. Iran launched missiles and attacked military bases as a deliberate target, those which are agreed upon under international law after being given Casas Belli by Israel. And Israel attacked a building protected under the Vienna Convention, killing civilians in the process. And yet no civilians have died in the Iranian attacks. Again, I want to make this super clear. I don't think Iran should have attacked. I think it's bad that they've potentially escalated this conflict. I'm not a defender of Iran. I just understand how international law and military law works, at least to a level to which the, the apparently our own government doesn't. First time, a state-on-state -state attack, 101 ballistic missiles, 36 cruise missiles, 185 drones. That is a degree of difference. Yeah. And I think a reckless and dangerous thing for Iran to have done. And I think the whole world can see all these countries that have somehow wondered, well, you know, what is the true nature of Iran? It's there okay. in black and white. What would Britain do if a hostile nation flattened one of our consulates? Well, we would take, you know, we would take the very strong action. And again, exactly the same thing in terms of scale and proportionality. Sure, you may say, if you want to take it just numbers rather than targets, one attack on a one location is not the same as 301 drones, missiles, whatever it might be, on a different location. Even if you just want to do the scale of the level of the attack as being the level to which it becomes disproportionate. Why do you not have that same criticism when it comes to Israel? 766 civilians died on October the 7th. At least 20,000 civilians have been killed in Palestine. Yeah, where is this talk about levels of proportionality when it comes to Israel and Palestine? It's never there. The criticism doesn't exist. And Iran would say that that's what they did? Well, what they did, as I said, was a so massive were, attack. So they, they were, were right think, to respond, but they overreacted, is well, that what you're I, saying? I'm, what I'm saying they is that the, right atta the, attack, the attack they carried out was on a very large scale, much bigger than but people accepted. they have accepted. a right to respond? Well, countries have a right to respond when they feel they've suffered 
uh, an aggression. Of course they do. But look at the scale of that response. Had those weapons not so been shot right down, respond, but there, just could have been, there could have been thousands of casualties, including civilian casualties. I think that's a really important point to take. Except they didn't attack civilian targets. They attacked it at military bases. Although I guess, you know, I could easily say, imagine, right? Imagine that those weren't just air bases in the Negev. It was a specifically a military base in the Negev desert that they attacked. So the chance of civilian, for civilian casualties if they all hit their targets was very low. But imagine if they'd hit the IDF headquarters in Tel Aviv, surrounded by civilian infrastructure. Would you hear anybody in the Western media talking about human shields? Of course you wouldn't. Incredible that the only piece of real journalism and scrutiny our government gets is from K. Burley. But again, even if you don't like the people being talked about, if you don't like the countries being involved here, I don't like either. I don't like George Galloway very much. I don't like Iran. The facts are on the table. International law is clear. The rules of war are obvious and un unknown to everybody. And yet they still cannot and be consistent with it, with its application. They will only apply it to those they perceive as being enemies. To the point which people say, you know, we have to support Israel because they're part of our Western family, as Oliver Dowden talked about on Laura Kay's show a couple of weeks ago. It's, it's ridiculous. Honestly, ridic the level of double standards, absolutely unreal. Hey there, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and leave a comment that helps the video out in the algorithm. If you subscribe and ring the bell, it'll let you know when I go live. I stream every day on YouTube and Twitch. You can also follow all of my socials down in the description. And if you want to support me in a more financial manner, there's a join button for memberships. It's just 99p to be a member on YouTube, as well as a patron. And there's some merch there as well. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.